everybody, Andrew here out at the Howard Homestead, and today we are going to thin out some apples on our columnar apple tree. Now, if you follow along, you've seen us plant these trees, you've seen us prune the trees, you've seen us protect them from frost, you've seen them blossom and bloom, and you've seen us have to spray aphids off them. And now it's time to thin out some of all these extra apples that we have. Now, while it may be hard to remove apples off your tree, especially if it's just started producing, there are a lot of great benefits to thinning out apples off your tree. Now, one of the main ones is to help prevent biannual fruit production, meaning that if you overload the tree, generally it'll start producing fruit only every other year. Some other benefits include preventing the tree from being overloaded, meaning if you got way too many apples on a branch, it could break the branch and hurt the tree. Now, less apples means more airflow, more sunlight to your apples, and that helps reduce disease issues and pest issues. So overall, thinning out apples means for bigger, healthier fruit. Now, when you wanna thin out your apples is generally after the June or July drop, depending on where you live. Now, the June or July drop is where the apple tree will start dropping small apples on its own, and you'll start seeing them at the base of your tree. After that's over, that's generally when we like to thin them out. And supplies you'll need will be a good set of pruners like the Yakatsani pruners that I have here and some sort of basket or bucket to collect the thinned out apples and we will give these to our chickens after we're done. Now for thinning the apples, we are going to thin out the clusters of apples. Generally, a lot of apple trees grow their fruit off of what's called a spur. It's a short growth off of the tree where all the apples collect. Now when you're thinning out the apples, make sure not to damage the spur. A good rule of thumb is that you want about two apples per spur and the fruiting spur is about six inches apart. Now this will change a little bit depending on your tree's situation. You may even want to thin them down to one apple per spur, but that will change depending on your tree. You'll also want to keep in mind how large the fruit will be when it's time to harvest them later this year. Now when you're removing the apples off of the spur, you can simply like pinch them off, but you do run a slight risk of damaging the spur, which is why I like to use the printers. Now when you're assessing what apples to pull off or remove, what I like to do first is remove the small ones, the damaged ones, and the misshapen ones. Now after that, I'll look at it and see which apples I need to remove so they get optimum sunlight and airflow. All right, so as we go in to thin out this first cluster, I can see here I've got several small ones that I want to take out first. So I'll go in behind here, snip them off, and remove them. Now another thing you can do is remove a couple leaves if they are in your way. As you go through it, I can see this one is misshapen. So remove that one. And to pick the best ones here, I'm going to remove these two because this is a larger one. And by removing it, I'll get more sunlight to it. So remove those, and then this one's got a little bit of a shape issue, so I'm gonna take that one off also. Now, as we get to these three here, I am gonna just pick the best one. So I think I'll go with this one, and I'll remove these, these two out of here. As we move around the tree, we can see that we've got a few more apples on this backside. Let me spin it. Now, on the backside of this tree, we've got a really small one down here. That's just not gonna grow all that great, so go ahead and remove it. Up here, we've got this nice big one that's all by itself. It's looking good. On this cluster here, or off this spur, you can see we've got one really big one and one really small one. So that makes it easy on which one to remove off here. On this last cluster here, we've got two very small ones that we will easily remove out. And getting here, we've got three that are kind of close together. They're on different spurs. I'm just gonna leave these three. And if I think I need to thin one out later, I'll do that. And now we are done thinning out apples off this columnar apple tree. Now being a columnar apple tree, it obviously made it very easy to thin out the apples. So if you have a larger tree, it may take more time, but generally the same principles apply to thin out your apple tree. Now, if you wanna get your own columnar apple tree like this or any other fruit tree or berry plants, head over to starkbros.com.